Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. So this is the last video going up in October and is therefore the last creepy theory video going up. I know a lot of you guys have really enjoyed this series so I might consider continuing it on after Halloween. I've also been watching a lot of murder mystery videos and missing person videos so if you guys are interested in seeing that as well, I've kind of been considering making some, let me know down below. But anyway, this last creepy movie theory video is on one that I'm sure you all guessed I would have made a theory on, Hocus Pocus. It is the iconic Halloween movie, so I really couldn't do a Halloween movie series without covering this one. And let's just get on into it. So, this Hocus Pocus theory is that Allison was actually a witch the entire time. I know, when I saw this theory, I was like, oh my god, wait, what? Like, what? But just hear me out. So this entire theory is based around the idea that once the Sanderson sisters were hanged for being witches, that the town decided to elect a guardian to watch over the house and ensure that the Sanderson sisters never came back. Because a lot of people at that time didn't really understand witches and weren't sure if they did have the power to come back from the dead or not. So we already know that Allison's family are direct descendants of the original people living in Salem because their family has been there for 300 years. So it is plausible that they were elected the guardians over the Sanderson sisters house. So for someone to be a guardian of a house that used to have three evil witches in it, they would definitely need to have some sort of magical powers of their own or be a witch of their own because otherwise they would be no match for the Sanderson sisters. So this is where the theory of Allison being a witch come in, comes in. So the theory is that Allison's family were witches but they were good witches. And when I saw this, I was just kind of like, no, that wouldn't work with the time period because they just hung anyone that was a witch. They didn't care if you were good, bad, ugly, pretty. Mm -mm. If you were a witch, you were hung. But this is an extremely rich family and with a lot of money comes a lot of respect. So possibly they were able to survive behind their money and their respect from the public to be able to survive the witch hangings and as a result were elected the guardian over the Sanderson sisters house. So it's Alison's heritage that's really the background for her being a witch because she is the only person we meet throughout the entire movie that has had a family that has lived in Salem for that long. And her mother also worked at the Sanderson Museum but obviously stopped working there once the museum shut down due to creepy ongoings. And it would make sense for her mum to work there because if Allison and her family are witches, then they would they would know that they need to keep a close eye on the house and the best way to do that would be through the Sanderson Museum. And therefore, when it shut down, they knew that it was time that the sisters would be coming back sometime soon. And some evidence to this is that even after the museum shuts down, Alison's mother's obsession with witches and the Sanderson sisters continues, even though she's already lost her job at the museum. Okay, so now for some more evidence. Firstly, it's Alison that leads the Denisons to the witch's house. They're only new to the area and they didn't even really know about the witch's house until they met Alison, but it is her idea to go there and once they get there, she's giving them like the grand tour of the house. She's like walking around, pointing out everything to them just like it's her own house. Like she's not afraid at all of any of the stuff there and is just pointing it all out, giving them a grand old tour. And this is especially weird when she comes up to the creepy spell book that's like locked away. Because when she looks at it, she is not afraid at all. She's laughing and talking. She almost looks kind of proud of the book. And she also kind of manipulates Max into lighting the candle. Because when he says that he's gonna light the black candle, she doesn't say anything to stop him and just laughs. The only person that actually tries to stop him is the cat. However, I'm not saying Allison is a bad witch. I think that she's a good witch. And the reason that I think she was going to the house on All Hallows Eve and took them with her was because she wanted to check on the house because obviously All Hallows Eve would be the time when they would come back so she needed to go there to just double check everything and this would explain why she was giving a grand tour because she was double checking everything. As for the black candle and her not stopping Max from lighting it, I don't think that she realized he was actually going to light it until it was too late because when the three Sanderson witches do appear, she looks terrified. <laughs> Some more evidence is that Allison knows an awful lot about witchcraft, like a lot. And it's Allison who figures out that the black candle will only last until dawn and that they have until dawn to get rid of the witches. She's also the one that opens the spell book, leading the witches to them. but. 
that informs them that they can put a circle of salt around them to protect themselves from the witches. And it's also Alison's idea to take the witches to the school, lock them in the furnace and burn them alive. Disgusting, but it is Alison that comes up with all of these crazy ideas. And as I said before, she knows a lot of stuff about magic. And this isn't the kind of stuff you learn in school, and the internet wasn't really a thing back then either. So it's pretty suspicious how much she knows about magic. And the first time we meet Alison, she is in fact talking about witches. It is in the classroom where Max is telling everyone that Halloween was just created by candy companies and how it's all a big conspiracy and she is the one that speaks up and explains that he is wrong. And when she meets little Thora for the first time, the first thing she says to her is, oh, I like witches. So there you go. That is all the evidence that Alison is in fact a witch. What do you guys think? I still don't know if I believe it. There's a lot of plot holes in this theory, but I think it's kind of fun to think about that Alison could potentially be a good witch. So that's all for this video, and that is also all for the creepy movie theories for this month. I hope you guys like this series as much as I did because I loved it. And let me know down in the comments below if you would be interested in seeing like a miss murder mystery video or a missing persons video because I've been so into them lately. So if you guys are into them too, I would be happy to share. If you want to see more of my face, I am on Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. My links are down below as always and on the screen right now. And that is all for this week's video. I will see you guys again next week. Bye.